Welcome all Thanks for joining us for today's In the Moment Artists and Their Work discussion with our special guests, Kendall Payne and Keith Patrick McCoy from Adair Theater in Pulaski, Virginia. I'm John Catherwood Ginn, the Associate Director of Programming here at the Moss Arts Center, and I'll be serving as moderator for today's discussion. This session marks the third installment of Moss's In the Moment series, which invites inspired creators from Southwest Virginia to share their work, to discuss processes and to engage with you. Before we begin today's program, here are a few notes of what you can expect. Our guests, Keith and Kendall, will kick things off with a presentation about Adair Theater. It's mis mission, history, wide-ranging productions, and inventive educational programs. From there, I'll pose a few questions to them in a moderated discussion. Before, we'll open things up to you, our attendees, for a Q&A with the artists. We want to make sure you have a smooth experience on the virtual platform. So here are a few housekeeping details to keep in mind. One, to ensure that all attending can hear today's program, please be sure to keep your microphone muted. You can toggle mute and unmute by clicking on the red mute button at the bottom left-hand corner of your Zoom screen. Two, if you have a question you'd like to ask Kendall and Keith before we get to the Q&A part of the program, that's all good. Please feel free type it into our chat box, which is also in your Zoom win window. You can find that right at the bottom if you haven't uh, experimented with that feature before. And three, for archival purposes, you may notice that we'll be recording today's program right up until the start of our Q&A with um, you attendees. At this time, I have the pleasure of introducing our guests. First up, we have Kendall Payne, who is from Pulaski, Virginia, where he serves as the producing artistic director of Adair Theater. He studied at Shenandoah Conservatory, earning a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Music Theater and minor in Piano, Dance, and Vocal Performance. Along with his performance experience, he has a strong background in theater education, serving as an instructor, manager, and keynote speaker at such organizations as Camp Hall, Young Audiences of Virginia, the Copenhaver Institute, and Junebug Center. Additionally, Keith McCoy is joining us here today He's originally from Portsmouth, Virginia. He currently serves as the Associate Artistic Director for Adair Theater, where he's directed and written numerous productions over the past seven years. McCoy studied theater performance at Norfolk State University. As a performer, he's worked for more than 20 years in regional theaters, summer stock companies, national tours, and theme parks throughout the US, as well as the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Credits as an actor include Javert in Les Mis Walter Lee in A Raisin in the Sun, Curtis in Dream Girls, Jim in Big River, Audrey Two in Little Shop of Horrors, Judd in Oklahoma, Tom Robinson in To Kill a Mockingbird, Judge Turpin in Sweeney Todd, and Del Rey in Memphis the Musical. As an educator, McCoy is taught at the Mad River Theater Works, Playhouse on the Square Summer Youth Conservatory, the Springer Theater Academy, and Junior Theater. Regionally, he's worked as a director, choreographer on productions of Dreamgirls, Cinderella, Fences, Charlotte's Web, and Evita. Everyone, please join me in a virtual round of applause for our guests, Kendall and Keith. Uh, thank you, John. Thank you so much for having us today. Uh, we'd also like to say thank you to the Moss Center for, you know, bringing us in to talk to you guys today. Um, as you said, my name is Keith McCoy, and I am the Associate Artistic Director for Adair Theater. Um, I've been with the company now going on eight years. The company was established um, nine years ago. And like I said, I've been with it for eight. Um, I first came on as a guest director choreographer on um, the second production of their, um, for the summer. And then from there, I kept returning summer after summer to do a production as again, guest director, guest choreographer. and. Eventually, I've been coming around so long and sharing ideas with Kendall that um, he asked me to come on as his associate artistic director, and I was more than happy to. And since then, we've been uh, directing productions. Uh, last year was our first full season, so I directed, I choreographed quite a bit. Um, we started building programs together, um, our education program, which we both teach at. Uh, we teach acting, singing, dancing. We work on a lot of life skills, just things that you can take 
from the stage and incorporate in your everyday life. Uh, that's one of our major focuses. Um, but Kendall and I, we met um, several years ago. We were on a tour together. And um, I remember asking him one day, what are you doing? Because he was constantly working on stuff. And he informed me that he owned a company and he was working on a production of High School Musical. And so that's when I let him know that I uh, choreographed. And from there, that's kind of how our relationship began. Um, as collaborators and as artists. Um, and it's funny the way we met. I always tell people, life happens the way it's supposed to happen. And you always end up where you need to end up at that time. Uh, Kendall and I met at a company in Richmond, Virginia. I had worked for that company while I was in college. And I also worked for that company immediately after I graduated from college. And after working there for so many years, I left that company for about eight years. And I went on and I had a career and I worked at a lot of different places. And Kendall, he was in school, he worked at other places. Anyway, so this company, all of a sudden I decided I wanted to go back there after being away for eight years, eight or nine years. Um, and so I contacted the company, I asked them, you know, do you have anything on your schedule? Would you be interested in bringing me back? And so they said yes. And so I booked two tours with them. Um, on the other side of the country, Kendall had been being courted by them for a while and they had been trying to get him to work for them. And the timing was never right with Kendall's schedule. So all of a sudden, um, I had this tour and one of our cast members dropped out if I remember correctly. And they happened to contact Kendall and that's how we met. And like I said, it's funny how I was away for so many years and then came back to the company. They had been courting Kendall for so long and then he finally decided to come to the company and that's when we met. And again, I believe in things happen for a reason and that's how Kendall and I met. And then we've been able to build a dare theater together, um, creating some beautiful work, meeting some great people, and bringing a lot to the community, um, bringing our passion, our love, um, hoping that it'll flourish in the area. Um, what we do is definitely for the people, and we just wanted to give back to the community that Kendall came from, and hopefully ignite a passion in them and a love for the arts like we have. And uh, hi everyone, I'm Kendall Payne. Um, I'll give you guys a little history uh, and background um, for me. I'm actually was born in Pulaski, raised there, grew up there. Um, I found my passion for theater in sixth grade uh, through a great mentor, teacher at the time, uh, Jeff McCoy. Uh, he was a middle school teacher at the time and he would do productions after school. And I saw a production for the first time and had friends in it. And I was like, how do you do that? I want to do that. And she told me you had to audition. I went and auditioned. And from there, I never stopped doing theater. He actually was promoted to the high school. And so my eighth grade year, I ended up moving to the high school with him and had four more years of theater uh, with him. Um, and one of the great things that Jeff McCoy uh, did is he provided a lot of opportunities for people to experience theater outside of Pulaski. Um, each year, uh, he would take a group of drama students to New York City to see Broadway shows. Every other year, he would take trips to Europe to see theater over across the country. And so from that, he kind of helped ignite that passion, that, that fuel for me to really pursue theater and take it seriously and, and, and realize that theater is more about giving and, you, and sharing your gift with others. Um, and so from that, um, I ended up going to college for theater and following my graduation, I performed in regional theaters, uh, did uh, commercial work, some modeling, um, some stage management, um, some stage craft, pretty much you name it, I've done it in some form or fashion. And so taking all those skills, I always thought it would be really 
great for me to start a theater company. I thought I would be much, much older in life. Uh, but things kind of just happen the way they're supposed to be, as Keith said. And in 2012, um, I found myself back home in Pulaski and not having uh, anything to do uh, during the summer. So I remember calling uh, my high school mentor up, Jeff McCoy, and being like, what are you doing with your high school auditorium this summer? Um, I want to get some actors together and put on a production. And so through that, uh, a dare theater was born. Um, we started in 2012. And what we would do is we would do one big uh, performance each summer. Um, and at the time we would combine um, professional actors with actors from the community or students um, that were interested in theater. And so we did that for the first four years, I believe. And then I started having parents ask how they could get their children involved. Um, could they take classes? And so from there, we started our educational program and it, it's kind of just blossomed from there. Um, we did our first um, big, uh, season last year where we pretty much had a production all year round um and we also um kind of expanded into providing arts residencies we provide voice lessons acting lessons dance lessons um we do a lot of community events as he said community is really important to us um and the whole mission of Adair is to provide opportunities for actors and patrons and opportunities to grow in education through theater. And so we've, I think we've done a really good job of bringing organizations that normally wouldn't collaborate together a platform to do that. So um, we try to use that truly as a way to not only bring the community together, but just provide that platform for people to all come together and share something and work towards something and enjoy something. Um, and so from that, um, that's kind of like what a dare theater is. Keith, feel free to add anything I haven't mentioned. Um, I think we pretty much covered like the basis of it. Um, Again, we are really about building something in the community for the community by the community. Um, this, and that's like, you know, said, that's really what a dare is. It's really, it's really for the people of Pulaski and the surrounding counties and, you know, wherever people may come from along with that. But it's really to uplift, to build up, um, to inspire. Uh, and like, you know, said, that's kind of how a their theater was born and what we're trying to build on. So I know a lot of you um, may not be familiar with our work. Some of you um, are, but what Keith and I would like to do is kind of share some production shots and um, from previous shows with, with everyone. Um, So this first shot is from our very first production, um, Snoopy the Musical, um, that way back in 2012. In the following summer, uh, we did a production of High School Musical. Um, and this is the show that Keith was talking about um, that I was working on constantly trying to prep for the summer and he jumped on board to help choreograph this show. Uh, and if you can see um, in the top left hand corner, there's a, a, a spry young lad um, in a red polo that is Jeff McCoy. He is currently the high, Pulaski County High School uh, theater department um, teacher and head.
and this is our uh, production of Wizard of Oz. Uh, as Kendall was saying, as you can see, there are students and a couple of professionals in there, actually. And what we try to do is create an atmosphere where young artists can work alongside more seasoned artists and get a feel for their work ethics, um, how they approach a character, the way they carry themselves in a rehearsal process. And you get to see a certain uh, quality and um, level of excellence that comes along. So we like to try to put um, students along with professional actors or someone a little bit more seasoned um, as far as acting goes. So it's always a growing process. But like I said, that was Cinderella. I said Cinderella, excuse me, that was Wizard of Oz. This right here is a musical review we did called Once Upon a Time. Um, and again, we have a wide range of performers going from I think our youngest performer in this show was eight years old, and we had people in their 30s in this production as well. And again, you have people who are very new to this, people who are very um, accomplished in this and has worked and have worked extensively, uh, coming together to share their talents and their gifts, also working in a mentor um, situation as well. Uh, another photo from Once Upon a Time as well. And what we've been able to do, as you go through the photos, you'll see how we've been building relationships with certain actors and how, as we've been growing, they've been growing with us uh, as artists, as individuals, as, um, as leaders, as people who are doing more in the community, uh, but we're all growing and flourishing together. Uh, this is a production of Aladdin right here. Uh, again, one of our young actors working alongside with me. Um, and, and again, it's the whole process of someone who's been there, working with someone who's on their way there, and then coming together and sharing talent. Um, another picture from Aladdin. Um, I believe this is Prince Ali. And um, the young man playing our genie, he's one of the young men that have grown up with us. I think he was eight or nine in this production. And now how old is he? 13, 14? But also I believe this was one of his first shows and this ignited a passion in him for theater and he loves theater. Um, we always talk about so many people being able to find their voice and find their place in the arts. And that's one of the things that we provided for people, um, having a platform to find your voice and share your artistic abilities. This is our production of Jungle Book. I think this is I don't know the. How to answer it. Uh, another production of Jungle Book. Uh, like I was saying earlier, the young man playing Mowgli, also the young man who played our genie in Aladdin, um, and he, you know, was growing with us. Uh, and as I said, he's older now and he's still currently doing theater. Is He found that love of it and found his voice within it in choosing to continue to have a career. So this um, is a picture of Chicago. And what's really great about um, this year was kind of a pivotal year for Adair Theater. Um, we actually transitioned from working out of the high school, um, Pulaski County High School um, space into working in downtown Pulaski. So this is one of our first productions that we did at um, um, the Pulaski Elks Lodge, which is located on Main Street. Um, this is one of the non-traditional spaces that we work out of. Um, and we have a great relationship uh, with the Pulaski Elks. Um, and one of the things that we wanted to do this year in particular was um, separate our, we kind of separated our um, productions to provide productions just for youth and then um, productions just for like community and professional actors. So we wanted to do more and we, this is a pivotal year that we used to do that. So that was kind of like a, a big step for us where we took a lot of just different risks. Um, and Chicago was one of those productions that we felt like everyone likes it, appreciates it, knows the, the, the tunes. And so we kind of went for that. 
Um, this next photo. Uh, also with the Chicago photo, that was, uh, Kendall said it was a pivotal point. It was also very pivotal because we were establishing another branch. Uh, we were creating our Adair Kids and then we were creating our main stage series, which sometimes is geared towards more of an adult audience, sometimes as Chicago is. But we really wanted to branch out a little bit. We felt like we had been around a while and now it's time to move forward a little bit. And then moving forward, we decided to, again, create a Dare Kids, which strictly is based on our children, developing their skills, their um, skills as a performer, but also their skills uh, just in life. And then we decided to create our more adult main stage series and to let people know that this is a completely different series. Chicago was brought, um, brought on for that production. Um, We're and really then we'll on creating a space that that is open to a lot of things. Um, and so you'll find that me and Keith do a lot of things that are, might not be traditional theater things, um, but it's to, again, bring as many people from the community together. And so we don't really like being boxed into one thing, which is one of the reasons we like non-traditional spaces. We like kind of challenging what you think something is um, and making you realize that it can be something else. Um, so with that, we provide, like he said, um, we have our youth programs, we have um, our adult main stage shows. Um, uh, we, we haven't talked about it yet, but we do different concerts. Um, and it's all, again, to provide as many opportunities for people to experience th theater in a different way. And I think, you know, adding to what Kendall said, um, giving s everyone something. Uh, because then, you know, we have our kids series, we have our adult uh, friendly shows, but then we have our family friendly shows. Uh, so it's just something for everyone, as Kendall was stating, with the concerts. You might not want to sit through an entire show, but you might want to enjoy an evening of music. Um, so we try to provide a little bit of everything for everyone. Uh, this photo here that we have, this is from Singing in the Rain. This was the opening show of last season, which was another pivotal point for us. Um, the season before we did um, our kids show and then we introduced Chicago, introducing the two series. This season with Singing in the Rain, we decided to do a full season. So I think that consisted of six shows. Am I correct, Kendall? Yeah, six main stage uh, six shows. Um, and this was our first time trying a full blown season. But again, we feel like from here on out, every year, we need to be taking steps towards the future, where we want to be and growing. Uh, this is another photo from our production of Singing in the Rain. And as you can see, um, Kendall was talking about unconventional spaces. Uh, really, this is just a ballroom that we're inside of. And we built the stage. And what we've done, we tried to create the audience in the round. So you see the show from different perspectives wherever you're sitting. Um, and blocking and creating the show, we made sure that wherever anyone sat, they were getting a different point of view from the show. So we pay very close attention to that. But that's one of the beauties of playing with an unconventional space. You can create your world the way you want to create your world. Um, again, giving each audience member a different point of view to see the show from. And one of the things you'll notice that as Keith used this space, um, it's very adaptable. Um, and we like that surprise factor when you walk into the room, it's what is it going to be this time? Um, also, so you know, with that, with the way we do it as well, it's very intimate. And so our audience, you're, you're a cast member, you're part, you're in the heat of everything. You're right there. Um, this production is James and the Giant Peach with our Adair kids. And um, relating it to what I was just talking about, there were tons of instances where the kids were out in the audience, um, hiding behind audience members or trying to draw them into the story. And so it's really great creating that relationship with your audience. So many times when you go to see theater, you have that pit and there's that distance between the audience. But right here, you get an instant connection. Uh, we really love that. And I think for our kids, they really enjoyed that as well, being able to literally reach out and touch people. 
Um, this production uh, is Legally Blonde, again, creating that variety for everyone. Uh, we opened up with, like I said, Singing in the Rain, which was a traditional musical. Then we went into James and the Giant Peach with our their kids. And then we jumped back to a more um, adult-friendly show with Legally Blonde. And again, as you look around, um, you probably can't tell, but this is a, a wide range of actors and acting experience. On the stage for this production, we have college students, we have high school students, we have professionals, we have community members who have other careers, uh, teachers, doctors, um, you name it, we try to bring it together again. So it's really community driven. Um, this photo's from, like we said earlier too, one of our musical reviews uh, is a Sinatra called, uh, Fly Me to the Moon. Fly Me to the Moon. And again, just right here alone in this, that picture, you had a wide range of experiences. And that's one of the beauty uh, beautiful things about what we do as well. Everyone brings a different experience to the stage and to what we're trying to create and find a way to t find a way, finding a way to tell your story um, or tell each person's story. It's really beautiful seeing everyone come together. Uh, this is from our production of Little Shop of Horrors. And then here we have our Christmas show. And our Christmas show, usually what we try to do, we love to pull people from our entire season. Because the Christmas show is our last show of the season, it's a great way to get everyone back together, um, kind of like the holidays. Um, so we, um, we bring our kids together, we bring um, our older community, whoever has been in the show for the season, we try to pull them together and we create a great Christmas spectacular. Um, this is our Christmas show, Home for the Holidays. Um, that was one of the, kid, the kids performing a number. And it's a show that Kendall and I created. Uh, it's an original piece. And basically it's a throwback to the sketch comedy shows. Carol Burnett, um, Flip Wilson, Saturday Night Live. It's just a throwback of songs, dance, um, skits, uh, and a great time for the family um, during the holiday season. And a great time for us to bring our family together of artists that we've spent the year with. It's, um, it's a great way to end our season. And so this next photo, um, this is uh, one of the projects that's like near and dear to Keith and I. Um, in the middle is Dr. Marilyn Harmon. Um, in Pulaski right now, there is a revitalization effort going on to uh, turn what used to be an African-American school into a community center. Um, and surrounded by that is a lot of history, um, a lot that is not well known to even the Pulaski residents that has a, a significance even on a larger scale. And so one of the things we wanted to do was capture that history and present it in a way that will live on beyond us. And we thought theater was a really good tool to do that. So Keith and I developed Quiet Courage, which is one story, just one of the many stories that come out of the Calfee Training School. And it's about a principal by the name of Chauncey Depew Harmon, who fought for equalization of salaries and facilities. Um, and it all started right here in Pulaski and it centered around the Calfee Training School. And in the middle, that's his daughter, um, Dr. Marilyn Harmon. Uh, she gave us a lot of information to pull from in creating the piece. And what we did, we ended up doing a stage reading of the production and that's Kendall playing um, Chauncey Harmon. Uh, and the story basically, it starts with us meeting his parents and his birth and goes through his life, uh, focusing on the changes that he made uh, within Pulaski for African-American students and teachers. And um, again, one of the great things about this production, we were able to pull many people from our community, which is great. Um, I really think it's great for people to learn that the place that they live 
that they might not know that much about actually has a very rich history. Um, so it was great being able to tell the story um, for the people of Pulas Pulaski and the surrounding areas. Again, we were able to pull in uh, professional actors with some college students, with some community members. Um, and we're really hoping that the story does have a life. Kendall and I, we developed several versions of the show. Um, one, of course, the full length production, which we would do periodically um, every so often. And then we have what we call our touring production, which we would take into schools, which is about 45 minutes long. Um, it's a condensed version of it, but we try to hit all of the PowerPoints, all of the important facts that need to be known. And then we have a third version of it that we actually promote to schools for the school to produce with their students, where Kendall and I come in and we mount it, we talk to them about the history and help them to create the story. So like I said, we have three versions of the story um, that we have that we produce periodically. And that was the forecast from yeah. our stage reading. And so that's just a little, a brief history um, over the last nine years of, of some of the things that we do. Um, within that, um, we also do arts residency programs where um, we actually go into schools and we help mount uh, school performances. Uh, we do workshops, master classes. Uh, we do a lot of different things. Um, again, trying to connect as many people to theater as possible. And as Keith said before, it's not really necessarily about being a superstar. Um, what it's truly about is just giving tools that um, you'll need in life. And I think at some point in life, you're gonna need to be able to stand in front of a group of people and communicate well and stand confidently and speak with the confidence in, in what you believe and what you're saying. And those are really the true skills that we're trying to uh, develop within our youth. And you know, we always tell them to um, learning these life skills that you can carry with you. And I always encourage people, you know, why are you creating art? What's the story that you're trying to tell? How are you impacting? So we constantly ask our uh, young actors that we ask our older actors that to get them to understand that it's more than just singing and dancing. Uh, like Kendall said, these skills that you're able to take out with you into the world, speaking in front of a crowd, being a leader, knowing how to work within a team, even though you're not the leader, um, knowing how to share ideas. And when someone doesn't agree with your idea, you don't have to agree them, but there's a certain amount of respect that comes along with that. Um, having them focus on what is most, what is best for the production? What is best to accomplish the common goal that we're working towards? And those are values that you can carry over into your normal everyday life. Um, but we're teaching it right here in theater with, um, I like to call them our young actors and our older young actors. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much for this wonderful presentation on the history of the company, how you two came to start working together, and all the different amazing productions and programs you fostered in our part of Southwest Virginia. Um, at this time, we're going to transition maybe to a short moderated discussion. I have a handful of questions just to kind of get the ball rolling. And a quick reminder to attendees, um, if you have any questions that, you, that are on top of mind um, and you'd like to share them, please feel free to put them in the chat box. And then when we transition in a few minutes to the final Q&A, when we invite you to engage with the artist, and we can be sure to have those questions um, queued up. So I love, I, it, was, it was wonderful to hear you speak so passionately about your commitment to the community, um, being a theater company that's of, by, and for members of the community, which is so well exemplified by um, this project, Quiet Courage. And of course, it's versatile different models, right? Produced in school, performed by your company in school, um, I'd love if you'd be willing to share a little bit more information about that project. I know, Kendall, I got the chance to meet you when you were adapting portions of the script for a visioning effort um, uh, in downtown Pulaski as they sort of reimagined what the Calfee Training School, what might become. But I'd love to hear, I mean, what was it like to work with Dr. Marilyn Harmon? How have people responded to it in rediscovering elements of Pulaski's history they might not have known about? So for me, um, not only was it an extremely rewarding 
um, experience, but it was so um, amazing um, to, to first meet Dr. Marilyn Harmon. She's lived an incredible life herself and, and her father before her. Um, just hearing the journey that her father went through was really inspiring. Um, and then when we first debuted the production in November to the public, um, it, it was kind of inspiring to the community as well, because again, that it's not really well known um, information. And so there's a sense of pride, I think that they that the community can take ownership in um, and really like rally behind um, not only the production, but I think a lot of people wanted to know how they could get involved with the revitalization project after seeing the show. So I think that was really cool to be able to do that for a community um, and, and give that opportunity to them and remind them that that's just one story too. I mean, it's an amazing story, but um, we interviewed several alumni from Calfi and they all have amazing stories to tell. And we're, we're hoping that this is just like the first of many. Uh, I really, really enjoyed my moments with Dr. Harmon and getting to know her. Uh, it was so great. But then also, she was able to share, you know, intimate details of her father's struggle during this time. Um, Dr. Norman Tripp wrote the dissertation that we built the play off of. And with a dissertation, you get a lot of information, a lot of factual information, but you don't get to know um, the intimate details. And just stories that she shared of her father, how warm, how encouraging, how loving, how much he truly loved his community. Um, it's a beautiful story. And those are the intimate stories that you normally would not be able to find out unless you talk to a family member. And the fact that she was willing to share these details about her father, um, the way the title came about, Quiet Courage, she told me a story about how her father was quiet and how he was sick. And you never really knew what was on his mind, but you knew he was figuring something out. And so um, that quiet strength, that's what she, that's what I kept picking up whenever she would tell me stories about him and just um, the way he was working, the way he was formulating thoughts, the way he was going about this. Um, because, you know, anytime you're making, you're creating change, there's going to be pushback. There's going to be, um, there's going to be people fighting against you, but you do it anyway. And so with that, I came with the title, Quiet Courage. Um, and I felt like that really defined who her father is or was. Uh, and like I said, or like Kim said, getting to meet so many of these people that just have these great stories. And, you know, I'm an outsider to Pulaski. So me coming there and learning about this rich history that I probably would have never known about had I not been affiliated with the D.A.R.E. Theater. It's, it, it's really beautiful seeing how all of this has come about um, and hearing these stories and getting to know these people and getting to know this man who made some major changes um, within the school system in Pulaski in the New River Valley area. Um, the play also, you know, uh, Thurgood Marshall, he was involved in the case with um, him uh, for equalization. Uh, he went to Tuskegee where he studied under um, George Washington Carver. There's so many like great facts within this that it's just a wealth of information that we had to pick and choose and it was kind of hard to determine what goes in and what doesn't go in. But we tried to tell the story to the best of our abilities uh, as tribute to Dr. Harmon's father. That's beautiful. I can just only imagine the inspiration a lot of the kids you're working with too in encountering the work and as the work continues to develop and roll out into schools in the region, as they understand how this part of Pulaski um, fits into this much broader national narrative. Um, yeah. We have one. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go we, ahead. Had, sorry we had one young man who was working with us on the project uh, when we were doing it in the school recently, and he literally lived around the corner from the Calfee Training School. Drove past it every single day. Had no idea what that building was until we started doing this play, and now he realizes 
wow, that's a major part of history that I have driven past every day of my life and had no idea. And I think it's just giving people that knowledge and giving them that sense of pride in their own community. Um, but first, you got to learn about it. And that's what right, we're here for. Right. <laughs> that's beautiful. Beautiful. Well, as you might have noticed, the chat is blown up with questions. And so I would love to transition to bring some of these questions forward that people have posed that open up all kinds of um, elements of the programs you run. Um, one of the first questions came in all the way from England. Um, the question uh, pertained to how the company, of course, has adapted in this moment of physical distancing amidst the global pandemic. There was a question particularly about your school programs, and I know we spoke briefly um, earlier this week about the ways in which um, you adapted um, in a very inventive way what was otherwise live summer camp programs to an online platform. Would you talk a bit about what that experience was like and how this very um, curious moment in the performing arts and the adaptations you've made as a company um, are, could potentially impact your future work in Pulaski and beyond? Sure. Oh. Um, so I think we're, we're at a time where, well, I think one of the things that theater does is it teaches you how to adapt quickly, um, to improvise and be willing to react in a moment. And I think one of the things that we're in a time where we all need to do that. Um, we're used to being in a routine and doing things a certain way. Um, but because where we are right now, we always have to kind of be able to pivot um, at any given notice. Um, one of the things we did decided to do, um, we knew we weren't going to be able to present our um, big production with our youth this summer in the way that we want it. So what we did is we um, actually use it as an opportunity to extend our educational program and instead of it being one session that was really big and um, a production based uh, camp, we actually split it up into three different online sessions. And so that gave an opportunity to work on three productions, not one. And um, there is um, the pros that also come along with the, you know, the difficulties of working in, um, on that new online platform. Um, but I think for the most part, we were able to still give the same information. Um, of course, we, theater is such a community thing. We want to be able to reach out and touch and, and, and just grab. And, and, and so I think, um, that was like probably the hardest thing for me um you know when we're doing vocal exercises i wanted to reach through the screen and be like no stand like this or, or do this <laughs> um but um uh, even with that um it was great to um in the moments where we were working together on a, a set de design project um to really um kind of sit back and listen to our campers still communicating and bonding and and still creating and fostering those relationships that we do crave as theater people um, as we're in the room. Keith, you want to add on to that? Yeah, uh, one of the things we have going on right now too, you know, um, most regional theaters and the theaters all over have closed down. So I, I know a lot of people are missing the stage right now, but what we need to remember is this is the perfect time to work on your skills, to develop your skills even more so when all of this is over with, you come out stronger than you went in. So what Kendall and I have been doing quite a bit of, we've been doing acting lessons online, we've been doing vocal lessons online, we've been doing dance lessons. So we're constantly still growing in the midst of all of this, that your skills are still being nurtured and developed. Working on songs that you probably been wanting to work on for a while, but haven't had the time. We're learning how to tap dance. You've been wanting to do it for a long time, you just didn't have the time. Uh, working on acting. There are monologues that you might have wanted to learn, but you never had the time. Well, I'm here to tell you, folks, you <laughs> have the time. And so that's one of the things, Kendall and I have been doing a lot of online coaching in all three of these areas. Um, and we have students local. Uh, I work with students in Georgia, New York. Like We have people all over that we're helping them nurture their skills. So instead of you know, it is a shame that we're unable to produce theater, but you could be perfecting those skills, learning how to hit three more notes than you could before, learning how to get your leg a little bit higher when you kick, learning how to develop these characters a little bit more. You can constantly be working on your skills, and that's what we're offering and providing to people right now. 
That's super inspiring. You're reminding me, I heard a quote recently, somebody asked, you know, during this period of stay at home, are you going to make this dead time? Dead time as people are liable to say, or is this going to be a live time? Mm -hmm. It sounds like um, the, the programs you're running and the message you're communicating to youth as well as adults in the Pulaski community is that makes this a live time, even though yeah. theater looks quite different, the art, performing arts look quite different, make the most of it. It is so hard for me to believe it's already 1245 because I feel like this is just the tip of the iceberg on what you all can share about both your history as well as, of course, aspirations for the company. Um, of course, there were a number of questions we weren't able to get to. So for those of you who posed your questions, I would highly encourage you to connect with Adair if you aren't otherwise on their mailing list. In fact, Keith Kendall, do you want to take a moment to share a little bit more information about if people want to connect more deeply with Adair's programs to stay in the know, um, what should they do? Um, visit our website, www.adairtheater.org. Um, for those actors out there, we constantly, year, uh, throughout the year, we're always accepting online video submissions. So if this is a company you would like to get involved with, we encourage you to go ahead and log on and send us a, an online video submission. Um, we, we're on Facebook and I think we're on Instagram, um, all at Adair Theater. Um, and again, if you, if this is a, something that you would like to support, please, um, you know, I think a lot of theaters are trying to pre prepare for the future. We don't really know exactly how long we're not going to be able to, to put on performances. So if you'd like us to like to help us stay financially stable through this time, please log on and donate. Um, you can do that at adairtheater.org. Excellent. Well, thank you, Keith Kendall. Thank you for making the time to share your passion, your story, your aspirations with us. Um, likewise, for those who tuned in, it was a delight to be able to spend this time with you all. Um, I encourage you to stay connected with Adair. And um, if you'd like to learn a little bit more about the Moth Arts Center's program in the coming 2021 season, we invite you to visit our own website at artscenter.vt.edu, or you can follow us on social media at the handle at Art Center at VT. And I'll be happy to send a message to all registrants today, following up with the information you shared, Kendall, as well as information about Moss. Otherwise, on behalf of everybody here at the Moss Art Center, thank you once again. We wish you the best and hope you have a great rest of your summer. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you guys.